Chapter 5 The Pearl Hotel was as seedy as grapes. Eleven stories of soot-covered, weather-eroded brick with a neon sign that had barely managed a dimly flickering ear hot. I pushed my way in through revolving doors and into a lobby with ratty carpets and plastic couches and dying palms, and nobody in it except for a night clerk, a guy in his eighties who snored at the times. On the counter beside him, a ferret-faced Rex lay on top of the register, chewing his tail. I leapt up in front of him. Beat it, he said. We ain't got a vacancy. Yeah, sure you don't. All the crowned heads of Europe are booked for the month. Have you got a new guest here? I offered him. Beat it. The question, I told him, is multiple choice, and the possible choices are yes or no. He looked up at me cunningly. Sorry there, Mac, but the possible choices are beat it or scram. This is just what I needed. A creep on the makeout at one in the morning. I swallowed my tongue and then sighed at him sorrowfully. Gee, what a shame. The guy said if I found him, he'd give me some shrimp. Shrimp? He was interested. What kind of shrimp? I consulted the menu. Your favorite kind. You mean fried? He said. Fried. I leaned over and whispered, I'd give you a cut if you could help me find him. It ought to be worth about 20%? Out of how many pieces? 112. He scratched his noggin. So how much is that? You mean 20% of it? Gee, I don't know, but I bet there's an adding machine in your office. He glanced at the office darkened room at the side of the counter and said, I'll be back. He jumped to the carpet and raced to the door. Take your time, I yelled after him. Math's pretty hard. I opened the register, warm from his rear, and then looked at the entries. A Peter Patter had checked in this evening at 9.48. Okay, that was perfect. In fact, on the nose. He was Peter Patter, like I'm Peter Rabbit. But even his alias gave me the clue that, whoever he was, he was not Mr. Strictly Legitimate Citizen. Now what I thought. Now I needed his room number. Where would it be? I looked up at the night clerk, who snored like a dog, and then carefully silently, not even clicking my nails on the marble. I walked past his bulk and then jumped down beside him, in back of the counter. A voice from the shadows said, Hold it right there! The voice wasn't kidding. I held it right there. Now turn around slowly, it added, and point those paws at the ceiling. I stiffened my spine. He said, turn around slowly and stick it on ice. I beg your pardon. I don't roll over for crummy hotel dicks, so stick it on ice? I suppose you mean cool it, he said. You wise guys are swift with a patter. All right, turn around. I pivoted slowly and looked at the gaunt and intelligent face of a brown Siamese. What's your name and your business? He gave it a growl. And spare me the whoppers. The name would be Sam and the business is private. He stared at my face. His eyes were that weary and watery blue that had seen about 
everything, possibly twice. But they weren't unfriendly. They simply inquired. Meaning private detective, I added. Listen, we're in the same business. I'd been in your place, I'd have done the same movie lines. Yeah, I suppose. If I'd been you, I'd have called myself crummy. He held out his paw to me. Brutus, he said. But my friends call me Buster. Then Buster it is. Let me tell you my problem. I'm after a guy who I think took a room here as Peter Patter. You do gotta love it, he said. The idiot names they come up with. So what'd he do? Seems he kidnapped a kitten. The miserable lug. He's in room 37, if that's what you're after. That's what I'm after. You see him come in? Sorry, pal, I was elsewhere. He isn't the only rat in this flea bag. Or even the flea in this rat bag. He scratched his chin. You are not at the plaza, in case you're confused. I did hear him squawk, though. He phoned to the desk. Said his window was sticking, his room was like ice, and he wanted a bottle. He get it? The booze? Oh, yeah. Got delivered. Of course, Mr. Fritz, Buster jerked at the night clerk, got gin for himself, so it's bye-bye to dreamland. He'll sleep through the shift. And who's his assistant? You gotta be kidding. Assistant? Around here? And who is the Einstein with spit on his chin? The kid on the counter? He shrugged. I don't know. He said his name's Wilmer. He came off the street, so I said he could stay here until he got warm. He's not on the payroll, if that's what you mean. Where is he? I'm here! Wilmer yelled from the office. And 20% is 112 I think you're mistaken, I yelled. Try again. Buster looked at the office and waggled his head. Come on, he said quickly. I'll show you the shortcut to room 37. I followed his lead. The shortcut turned out to be a trip through an open window, into an alley, up to the top of an upended mattress that leaned on a wall, and from there to the rungs of a fire escape ladder. The metal was slippery. The ladder was cold, and the wind from the east blew at fifty an hour. It was one of those nights to be home on the rug, not patrolling in alleys. But this is my life, and I happen to like it. We got to a landing, a metal balcony spanning the width of a couple of windows, both of them curtained and bouncing the moon against battle-scarred window panes, blackened with grime. A woman was sobbing in one of those windows. I pictured the tears getting into her ears as she wetted the pillow and wept through the night. In the other window, a man and a woman were having their argument. Harry, she spat, if you weren't so cheap, we'd a stayed someplace decent. Buster kept climbing. I followed his tail, jumping over a mitten that lay on the step, till we got to the balcony one story up. Again, it was fronted by two dirty panes. The one on the right, Buster pointed, is empty. This'd be Patters. He pointed ahead. We moved to it softly. From somewhere behind it, a hard, dirty light tumbled out from a strip about three inches wide where the window was open, presumably stuck there, as Patter had said. The wind channeled through it, occasionally lifting and whipping the edge of a dirt-colored shade. We lowered our heads and then peered through the strip. In the brown-yellow light of an overhead light bulb, a bad-looking character slept on the bed. A bottle of whiskey was clutched in his hand. It seemed to be empty. Its lip pointed down at the moth-eaten carpet was dribbling air. So that's Mr. Patter, I muttered. 
Peter Patter is pickled, Buster pronounced. He was also a string bean, a long, skinny guy in a forest green sweatsuit with yellow blonde hair. His pea coat and watch cap were hung on the doorknob. I shuttled my eyes through the rest of the room. On the top of the dresser, I spotted the duffel bag, open and empty. Beside it, a bowl with a puddle of water. Is that for the kid? Buster jerked at the water. I shrugged. I don't know, but I don't see a kitten. Describe him. He's black and he answers to fluffer. Let's see if he does. We lowered our heads to the slit in the window and hollered out, Fluffer! Here, little man! Nothing. Not a peep. Not a peek. Not a stir. We tried it again, and again nothing happened. It wasn't worth trying to get through the window. The opening was barely the size of my head. But I wriggled my nose in and sniffed at the sill. Then I sniffed at the underside edge of the window. I looked up at Buster. The kid got away. Buster did the same sniffing. I smell him all right. He was up on the sill, and he squeezed through the opening. So where does that leave us? I sniffed at the slats on the fire escape landing. The scent wasn't there. Any traces of fluffer were gone with the wind. Poor little fella. Buster looked sad. I don't think he can make it. Not on his own, and not in this weather. We'll give it a look. But I'd... Hold it a second. The wind had come in from another direction and zapped me a clue. I said, What does that smell like? I don't want to know. Come on. Seriously, Buster. Seriously, Sam? It smells like a shrimp that got tossed in a sewer and drowned by a cockroach and ate by a rat and then barfed in a dumpster. Exactly, I said. And the can that it comes in says, Healthier Pet. We moved to the odor, which led to the right, and then up to the ledge of that second window, and into the bowl of a half-empty can with a popped-open pop-top that rattled and rolled. Healthier Pet. Buster read from the label. Shrimp-flavored soya with broccoli and kale and organic alfalfa. Oh, brother, he said. I don't even want to read that, let alone eat it. I said, you're not kidding. Imagine pulling a stunt like that on an innocent kid. He must have been starving. Poor little guy. Even lost a few hairs in it. See? Little blacks. I examined a glop of the leftover gravy and looked at the sad little cluster of hairs. He was lured through the window, I figured. Somebody came up the ladder and flashed him the can. Or down the ladder. Nope, I said. Up. The guy shucked his mitten on one of those stairs on his way to the kitchen. All right, Mr. Holmes, why do you take off his mitten? To open the can. That's a nifty assumption, but... Nope, I said. Look. I flipped up the pop-top and showed him the ring that you pop the thing up by that gleamed in the light. There were dark woolen threads in it. Now, want to bet they're the same mitten? The guy tried it first... When he still had his mittens on. Sam, you're an ace. We went back to the mitten, which offered us zip. It was brownish and fuzzy and missing some threads, but it held no aroma and nothing at all in the way of a label. We sat on the steps and exchanged a few groans and a pause full of thought. 
So I'm totally clueless, I said at the end. Well, you know he was kidnapped, and kidnapped again. First by Patter, the second by X. Yeah, good old X. Buster suddenly shivered. And not only that, but I've also got Y. Y being... Why are they after a kitten? I'd say Mr. Patter does not need a pet. And I'd say Mr. Mitten does not need a kitten? I nodded. Precisely. I see what you mean. We shared some silence. I'd better get going. I sat for a time and then stretched as I rose. Can I ask you a favor? You don't even have to. You'll watch Mr. Patter? He won't make a move without Buster is on him like stink is on fish. Let me know where to reach you. I gave him my number and also my email and wished him good night. <laughs>